If you are new to our channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So it's very important in order to bring birds into your garden. Many gardeners do not want to do such because they think the birds are damaging the produce in which they're trying to grow, pecking holes in tomatoes or ripping plants out of the ground. Simply, they're poking holes in the ground in tomatoes because they're looking for moisture. Birds are important in the garden because they will come in, feed off your bird feeders, and they have a keen sense of eyesight in which they can harvest or consume those bad bugs that are damaging your plants. The tomato hornworm, the Colorado flea uh, potato beetle, and et cetera, and so on. So we are going to install a bird feeder pole. Now, a bird feeder pole can be anything such as just a shepherd's hook stuck in the ground. We're going to go a little bit more elaborate with a customized system that I've created. We've got this galvanized pipe here. It's an inch and a half pipe. And at the top, I've got two hooks. Now, those are from a very old folding camp chair. And those will work very well as I can, once this thing is buried in the ground, we can hang the bird feeders off of it, give enough distance between the two, and the birds can be happy. And it's not so much that they're, uh, it's going to fall off during a windstorm. So how I have done this was, I took those hooks, now everything can be customized, you know, whatever material you have, stuck them in the pipe and then put metal pieces of pipe around that to wedge it in. So this is not going anywhere. This pipe here, the height, I've got it at eight foot tall. I'm going to put it in the ground about 18 inches. That's going to give a good foundation and then still allow me enough uh, height to keep it off the ground and away from other things, but I can still reach the bird feed uh, feeders in order to film. So you could just pound it in the ground, such as this, or we're going to use a post hole digger in order to create a hole, put the post in, backfill, and secure it around so it doesn't tip over. That's going to be the easiest and quickest way in order to go about doing that. If you don't have a post hole digger, which is what this is, that's what the old timers would dig fence posts with. And this still is a modern tool that's very effective in gardening and farming. You can just take a shovel and dig a hole and backfill that way as well. If you have an auger of a decent size, let's say a two foot auger, that would work as well. So we're going to decide to put a bird feeder kind of in the central back side of the garden. We've got the shrubbery here in order to give them a little security so they can come in, feed, and then go back and then monitor the situation to see if there's, make sure there's no uh, predators around. So I'm going to get this hole dug and then we will get the post set and get our bird feed feeders filled up and we'll talk about what we're going to put in the feeders. Okay, so we've got the hole dug. Oh, I'm down about 18. 12, 18 inches, give or take a little bit. That's where we want. Now, we'll put the pole in here. And what I'm going to do is just kind of give it a little push down. And you can see here, we're at a good height to where we can hang the bird feeders off and we can still have access and we don't have to worry about any predators uh, climbing up the pole. So we'll backfill this. And all we're going to do is just dump the soil back in and I can take my rake handle and tamp it in. And all I'm doing is packing the soil around the post. Now, as weather happens, rain, cold, warm, it will settle a little bit, but we're just getting a, just like if you're setting a post for a mailbox or Anything else, we're gonna really tamp it in good to pack it in. And I'll have to probably add a little bit more soil from other locations, but that's a good start there. And you can see that, that thing's very good and firm. So now let's talk about the bird feed in which we're feeding. Any type of bird feeders will work. Um, if you're on a pole like this, you're not going to have to worry about squirrels as much as if you were on a wooden pole or uh, some type of way in which they could elevate and get up to the bird feeder. 
So I've already got this one filled, and we'll talk about the material I've put in that one in a moment. And then we've got this one here that you fill from the top. That one also comes, opens up. We fill that from the top. Now, the feed in which we're going to put in these feeders are from Wild Delight. We've got two different mixtures here. This is the Sizzling Hot. Birds cannot taste heat. This is coated with a chili powder. So if you have problems with squirrels getting into your bird feeders and destroying the bird feeders and eating the feed, you want to get some of this. Squirrels can taste heat when they congest this and get in their nostrils and their uh, taste buds. They will go elsewhere because this is a very hot spice coated bird seed. But the birds doesn't taste it, so that works out well. I'm also going to have in one of these uh, deck, porch, and patio mix. Uh, these the, in, the nice thing about Wild Delight is a typical low-budget bird seed has a lot of filler, the cracked corn you'll see in it. That's why you see a lot of times underneath your bird feeder, the birds have kicked out all of that junk and they're looking for the nuts and the berries and the, and the seeds in which they want to consume. Wild Delight doesn't have that filler. They give you the premium mix so you can get the best, uh, the, the most birds in and give them the, the nutrients that they need. So we filled this one. Very simple to fill a bird feeder. You just pop the top off, pour it in. This one here, I'll demonstrate how we do with this. And these bird, and you can get bird feeders, uh, plastic uh, or plexiglass, wood, um, many different shape sizes, and specifically targeted for birds that you're wanting to bring in, whether that's finches or blue jays or robins or cardinals. So we're just gonna fill this up here. Okay, did spill some, but that's just part of the part of the fun here. Put that top on, and that's done. Uh, so you have to be also aware of the type of bird feeder you're having. Most bird feeders will have some mechanism or some way in which to prevent the seed from getting moist if you have intensive rain, but you still want to be vigilant and go out and check your bird feeders. Uh, after a rain. This bird feeder has been filled for a week and it does have drainage holes but the seed is still very moist but birds typically are not too uh, picky about it. These are This is good seed and they're going to go ahead and consume it anyway. So uh, bringing birds into your garden it's something that if you haven't done you should seriously consider. Also incorporating a bird bath or some type of means in which they can consume moisture whether it's a tub with some rocks in it in order for them to get in get the moisture dust off and then fly away or a, a full-blown bird bath so bringing birds in the garden it's very important for the health of your garden for more information please visit the wisconsinvegetablegardener.com